National Post, 5th of April 2023, Raheel Rasa, Pakistan is in crisis, and we should all be concerned about that. Pakistan is one of the most radicalized and militarily advanced nations, should Pakistan fall, there will be refugees in every country, and jihadis and the poison of Islam will spread worldwide. This is the new money-grabbing sales spiel. The political climate in Pakistan is the drama that most closely resembles the linked plotlines of Game of Thrones and The Sopranos. The fifth most populous nation in the world, officially known as the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, with a population of over 233 million people and a land area of 881,913 square kilometers. It is the only country with nuclear weapons and the second-largest Muslim nation in the world. The army, which the general populace accepts, is the most critical institution in Pakistan. It's important to remember that the military has held power for 50 of the country's 75 years. Pakistan has had four successive military governors and three military takeovers since gaining independence in 1947. It's also important to remember that no civilian administration has ever served its entire term. Which general will win the general election? Was once a shared joke. The nation's current situation is serious business, though. Pakistan is in financial, political, and moral collapse. Farhanaz Bahani, a novelist and a former member of the Pakistani parliament, claims that Pakistan is facing a triple crisis. The Pakistani Taliban are a menace to it. An economy that is failing. Moreover, there is divisiveness and political anarchy in public. Pakistani officials continue to battle among themselves rather than coming up with answers for the nation, and they appear utterly unprepared to handle the task. Pakistan's financial situation is at an all-time low. Looking at the seven years from FY16 to FY22, Pakistan's cumulative current account deficit was $74.5 billion, while the state bank's forex reserves fell by $3.6 billion during this time, says Don, Pakistan's foremost English-language newspaper. Accordingly, Pakistan borrowed $65 billion of the $70.9 billion it needed for finance. The external deficit was so barely covered by foreign investment that the government was forced to keep borrowing. Pakistan's external sector is no longer viable because foreign creditors are hesitant to continue lending. Pakistan's political condition is a game of vengeance. A no-confidence vote in parliament resulted in the resignation of former Prime Minister Imran Khan in April 2022. During his time in office, he jailed numerous politicians, including Maryam Nawaz Sharif, the daughter of Nawaz Sharif and Sharif's predecessor as Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif. With Shahbaz Sharif, Nawaz Sharif's younger brother, now serving as Prime Minister, a game of prisoner exchange is underway. The Pakistan Tariqi Insaf PTI, Khan's political party, and the Pakistan Democratic Movement PDM, a coalition of opposition parties, are engaged in a full-fledged turf war. This is no longer seen as politics but as personal vendettas at work. Internationally and politically, the conflict over Pakistan is between American and Chinese dominance. Before he lost power, Khan was steering Pakistan into the Russia-Chinese camp, although the Pakistani army has always remained devoted to the U.S. State Department. In actuality, Khan, the former prime minister, was in Moscow for a state visit on the day when Russia invaded Ukraine. Readers are free to come to their own opinions. Khan seems to perceive this menace everywhere since an attempted assassination on November 3, 2022, in which he was shot twice but survived. He has been encouraging supporters to participate in violent conflicts with the law. Many Pakistanis are tired of Khan's antics and perceive this as a mob mentality, they worry they are turning Pakistan into a laughing stock worldwide. The PDM appears to have little influence over the issue in the interim. For Pakistan, this could be the beginning of the end. Institutions, 
particularly educational institutions, have collapsed while the nation has been ripping itself apart. Politicians, however, don't appear concerned about the disintegration of the educational system, unemployment, poverty, or a 31.6% increase in the consumer price index year over year. Some families have ended their lives due to extreme need. Pakistan still has much to do to reclaim its geopolitical and financial stability. Normalizing relations with India and establishing diplomatic ties with Israel would help. But maybe even more crucial for the rest of the world is the requirement for a global law organization to supervise Pakistan's nuclear arsenal to guarantee that they won't fall into the wrong hands if the scenario worsens. We might all be impacted by this scenario in real life.